in next part of the chapter electrochemistry we will study about electrolytic cells and electrolysis electrolytic cells and electrolysis now in electrolytic cell external source of voltage is used to bring about a chemical reaction and it is of very important use in laboratory as well as in chemical industries one of the simplest cell which we have studied even in class 10th also is that is one of the simplest electrolytic cell we have studied is that is refining of copper in this cell we take two electrodes one is thick and other is thin the thick one is the impure copper and act as anode whereas thin cathode and it is pure and it is dipped in that is aqueous copper sulfate solution aqueous copper sulfate solution and it is join to an external source and when electricity starts passing at anode oxidation takes place at anode oxidation takes place and this electrons which is coming out from the anode is taken up by the ion to become pure copper so on cathode reduction takes place so when the process completes with ultimately the anode becomes thinner and the cathode becomes thicker and the impurities are settled down at the bottom of the anode and is called as anode mud so here the copper is dissolved at cathode and deposited uh, anode the copper is dissolved at anode and is deposited at cathode so this is the method by which we can refine copper or we can get copper of high purity for uh, the same method can be used for sodium magnesium aluminum in which no suitable reducing agent is available for the reduction now there was a scientist called michael faraday he gave the two laws for electrolysis so michael faraday he gave two laws hmm. 
Now Michael Faraday gave two law Faraday and 1833 to 34 he gave two laws the first law is that the m for the amount of substance deposited at any electrode amount of substance deposited at any electrode is directly proportional to the current supplied through the electrolyte through the is Once again I will repeat the amount of substance deposited at any electrode is directly proportional to the current supplied through the electrolyte. So mass of the substance is directly proportional to the current applied. Now second law states that ki if the two or more cells are connected in series then the amount of substance deposited the amount of substance deposited is directly proportional to the chemical equivalence equivalence when two or more cells are connected in series that is mass is directly proportional to chemical equivalence it is represented by z and z is equal to atomic mass of metal divided by number of electrons required to reduce the required to reduce the metal that is cation now If suppose that is copper and aluminium are collect, uh, connected in series so mass of copper by 
mass of aluminium will be equal to Z of copper by Z of aluminium. So if two, then you can write on equal to equal to, and we can calculate the values. Now, in olden days, the there was no constant current sources available. So to determine the amount of the substance deposited was not uh, absolute. Means we were not able to calculate it. Ki how much amount of the metal will be deposited but nowadays we have the sources which gives the constant amount of electricity so the formula which we get to calculate is q is equal to i into t now i is current T is time and Q is the charge means how much charge is uh, can, uh, will be liberated that can be calculated by I into T unit of charge is coulomb and I is ampere and time is second. Now we will take one example. Ag plus plus electron gives you Ag. So to neutralize the cation we require one electron for one mole of electron that is will be equal to charge present of on nitrogen is 1.6 into 10 to power minus 19 and if we want to find out the charge present on one mole we have to multiply by Avogadro's number 6.023 into 10 to power 23 and when we calculate this the value comes out 9 6 4 8 7 coulombs per mole so this value is called as faraday constant faraday constant and for our convenience, we write down this value as 96500 coulombs per mole. So, in this equation, if we want to find how much amount of current is passed, then we can write down that is Q is equal to NF. N is the number of electrons, N is number of number of electrons so how much electricity is passed through it that how much electricity is passed through it we can calculate so it will be 1 into 96500 similarly for mg2 plus plus 2 electron gives you mg so here the electricity pass will be 2f because number of electron is 2 similarly aluminium the number of electrons to neutralize will be 3 electron so it will be 3f now
we will do one example given in your book ncrt book that is a solution of copper sulfate is electrolyte for this example 3.1 example 3.1 that is aqueous copper sulfate solution is there if for it time is given to you is 10 minutes so to convert into seconds so 10 into 60 that will be equal to 600 seconds current i i is equal to 1.5 ampere then mass you have to calculate mass deposited copper is equal to what so for it we have to write down first the equation so cu 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives you Cu. So, here 2 electrons are required. So, we will by unitary method that is 2 F electricity is required to deposit 1 mole of copper that is equal to 63.5 grams of copper so 2 into 96500 63.5 so 163.5 divided by 2 into 96500 and we have not calculated the charge q is equal to i into t so i is given to you 1.5 and time is given to you 600 so that will be equal to 900 coulombs so therefore from 900 coulombs we will get 63.5 divided by 2 into 96500 into 900. So, the value comes out as 0 0.2938 grams. 2938 grams of copper is deposited by and we pass the current of 1.5 ampere for 10 minutes. So, similarly numericals are given at the back of your book you can do it not back of the chapter. Next we will study Product of electrolysis. Now, product of electrolysis depends upon the nature of the material electrolyzed or the electrodes used if the electrodes are inert if then they do not take part in the chemical reaction but if the electrode is reactive it participates in the chemical reactions that is inert electrodes like platinum or gold they do not participate in the chemical reaction but copper silver sodium they are more reactive 
so they took they take part in the chemical reaction and the product of electrolysis it depends upon different oxidizing and reducing species present in the electrolytic cell as well as on their standard electrode potential but there are some chemical reactions whose speed is so low yeah so slow that at lower voltage they seems to be they seems not to be taking place and extra potential has to be applied this extra potential is called as over potential and we will take one example of the electrolysis now we have studied that is molten sodium chloride now molten sodium chloride only two ions are involved in electrolysis that is na plus plus cl minus now the it means at cathode sodium metal will be deposited at cathode sodium metal will be deposited and at anode at anode chlorine gas will be deposited because in molten sodium chloride only two ions are present that is sodium ion and chloride ion but if we take aqueous sodium chloride then two different ions are present on two different electrodes aqueous and ion means nacl plus h2o means na plus and h plus at cathode and cl minus and oh minus so these two ions will be liberated at anode so to find out what are the products obtained at different electrodes it depends upon the chemical electrode potential so we will study that is what are the products and what are the criteria for the formation of product Na aqueous NaCl solution. For aqueous NaCl solution, first at cathode. Two reactions are possible. Number one, Na plus plus electron gives you Na. And the second reaction is H plus plus electron. gives you h for the first reaction e0 value that is electrode reduction potential value is equal to minus 2.71 volts for second reaction e0 cell is equal to 0 
volts now at cathode higher the value of electrode reduction potential at cathode higher the value of e0 cell that product will be deposited at cathode that product will be deposited that product will be deposited so in the above reaction you can see that the value of h plus ion is higher so hydrogen gas will be liberated at cathode hydrogen gas will be liberated at cathode but we know that hydrogen gas is liberated by dissociation of h2o hydrogen gas is liberated by now hydrogen ion is liberated by the dissociation of water and this h2o gives you half h2 plus oh minus so these are the reactions which takes place at cathode now reactions at anode now reactions at anode now at anode cl minus gives you half cl plus electron now here value is 1.36 volts and the second reaction which takes place is 2h2 gives you O2 plus 4H plus plus 4 electron and here the E0 value for it is 1.23 volts. Now from here we can see that at, at anode the E0 value whosoever is low 
will be preferred. So we can see here that the second reaction that is 2H2O gives you O2 plus 4H H plus plus 4 electron has got the lower value but due to the over potential of oxygen due to over potential of oxygen it is not and that is not liberated chlorine gas is liberated due to the over potential of oxygen oxygen it is not liberated chlorine is liberated So according to the rule E0 value is low will be preferred but due to the over potential of oxygen chlorine gas is liberated it is not liberated here it should be it is not liberated chlorine is liberated now so in a nutshell NaCl aqueous gives you Na plus plus Cl minus at cathode H2O gives you half H2 plus OH minus at anode Cl minus gives you Cl plus electron. So overall reaction is NaCl plus H2O gives you NaOH plus H2 plus Cl2. One more example is uh, given that is That is electrolysis of sulfuric acid. Electrolysis of sulfuric acid. During electrolysis at anode, the reaction which takes place is 2H2O gives you O2 plus 4H plus plus electron and here the value is 1.23 volts. Second reaction which takes place is sulfatein aqueous gives you S2O8 2 minus plus 2 electrons here the value is 1.96 volts so you have studied that at anode the value whosoever is lower is preferred but for dilute sulfuric acid for dilute sulfuric acid that is this is reaction 1 and this is reaction 2 
first reaction is preferred first reaction is preferred and for concentrated sulfuric acid second reaction is preferred so to, it depends upon the conditions provided to the reaction now i will like to solve some numericals for you from ncert only in the previous video i have told you how to solve the uh, questions of electro electrode potential that is known as using known as equation now we will study the questions for the delta g there is a question in ncert that is question number 3.6 ncert exercise okay, there is a button cell in which the reaction taking place is zn plus ag2o plus h2o gives you zn2 plus plus 2 ag plus 2 oh minus and for this reaction you have to find out e0 cell and delta g now this in this reaction we have two electrode reaction one is zn gives you zn2 plus plus two electrons and second is that is 2 ag plus plus two electrons gives you 2 ag so it means n is equal to 2 means that is the number of electrons exchanged during the reaction is 2 and e0 value will be provided to you that is e0 for cathode that is your cathode will be uh, silver that is is given to you is 0.80 and uh, in ncert it's not given to you you have to cal uh, get from the table given in the chapter and for anode that is zn oblique zn2 plus a value is given to you is minus 0.76 so e0 cell will be equal to e cathode minus e anode e cathode is that is silver 0.80 minus then it is minus 0.76 so that will be equal to 1.56 volts this is the e0 value then to calculate delta z delta g is equal to n f e0 cell so e0 cell just now we have calculated and also we have calculated so 2 into 96500 into 1.56 so that is equal to 301.0 0.080 kilo joule per mole the negative sign this negative sign only uh, tells us that the reaction is feasible because for delta g should be negative for a reaction to be uh, spontaneous then
Next numerical is three point eight. Now here conductivity is given to you. Question is the conductivity of a zero point two zero m solution of KCl. So conductivity is given to you is zero point two zero m KCl. No, sorry, this is conduct K KCl. Wait, 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 wait. Conductivity is zero point zero two four eight Siemens per centimeter, and concentration that is molarity is given to you is zero point two zero m. Unit, if you know. you can do it so molar conductivity is the formula is conductivity into 1000 by concentration so here concentration we have taken in molarity so that is equal to Our conductivity is zero point zero two four eight into thousand by zero point two zero m. So when we will calculate, it will come out one twenty four Siemens centimeter square per mole. so molar conductivity is kappa molarity concentration next question is 3.9 now 3.9 the resistance of a conductivity cell containing 0.01 m kcl so concentration is given to you is 0. Point concentration 0.001 m kcl resistance is given to you 1500 ohms cell constant you have to find out cell constant is equal to what if the conductivity of the cell is Zero point one four six into ten power minus three Siemens per centimeter. So these values are given to us. So conductivity, that is kappa, is equal to one by R into L by A. So L by A is cell constant. L by A will be equal to conductivity into resistance, so that is equal to zero point one four six into ten to the power minus three into fifteen hundred. So the value comes out is equal to zero point two one nine. per centimeter so you should know the values to calculate 
and there is one in the exercise there is one question 3.17 in that they have asked that the whether the reaction is possible or not so you should know that ki you will find out e0 for each and every i will give you one example exercise question number is 3.17 ki using the electrode potential predict the reaction between the following is feasible or not so first is that is fe3 plus and i minus so you should know the reaction otherwise it is not possible for example fe Fe two plus or Fe three plus will become by losing one electron. Now for iron, the value is Fe two plus to Fe three plus is zero point. Seven seven volts, and for I minus oblique I two, the value is zero point five four. So E cathode minus E anode. This is the formula which you will apply. So here E cathode is. That is iron. So zero point seven seven minus zero point five four. So the value comes out is zero point two three, and value is positive. So if the value is positive, then the reaction is spontaneous. If it is negative, it is non-spontaneous. For example, if you will take that is second one second one more example you can take then the rest of them you can do it second is ag plus and cu now here the cathode is silver and anode is copper the element or the metal which is more reactive always act as anode and the less reactive act as a cathode when we we'll go through the series you will come to know that uh, copper is above silver so copper is more reactive than silver for silver electrode the value is 0.80 volts and for copper the value is 0.34 both are positive Now E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode, so that is equal to cathode here is silver minus anode is copper. That is equal to. Zero point four six volts. So E zero value here is again positive. So reaction is spontaneous. So there is one more question I will like to do you for Kolarov's law.
it is given in the ncrt access yes this is example 3.8 example 3.8 and page is 82 in this question the given part is lambda 0 m for nacl is given to you is 126.4 lambda 0 m is the molar conductivity for an acl is unit is cmen centimeter square per mole for hcl lambda 0 m for hcl is 425.9 unit is same lambda 0 m for sodium acetate sodium acetate is 91 and we have to find out lambda 0 m for acetic acid we have to calculate for doing these numericals we will write down their Uh, that is dissociation equations. For example, lambda zero m NaCl will give you lambda zero m Na plus plus. This is from Kolmogorov's law. Kolmogorov's law states that the molar conductivity of the uh, salt will be equal to the sum of the molar conductivity of the ions present in one formula unit so for nacl it is na plus plus cl minus for hcl it will be lambda 0 m h plus plus lambda 0 m cl minus for acetic sodium acetate is lambda 0 m na plus plus lambda 0 m acetate ion and we have to find out for the acetic acid so in acetic acid we require for acetate ion CH3COO and lambda 0 m for H plus ion now in the above equation we can see that acetate ion is present in third equation and h ion is present in second equation and the common is na plus in the first and second third and cl minus in first and second so we are, we will do that adding the equation that is sodium acetate adding the equation hame chahiye kya acetate ion ha adding the equation third and second subtract first add equation third and second and subtract 1 from 
द सम सो दैट इज इक्वल टू फर्स्ट इज दैट इज थर्ड इज वट इज द वैल्यू थर्ड हाँ नाइंटी वन प्लस सेकेंड इज फोर ट्वेंटी फाइव पॉइंट नाइन माइनस वन ट्वेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट फोर सो दैट इज इक्वल टू थ्री नाइन्टी पॉइंट फाइव सीमेन सेंटीमीटर स्क्वायर पर मोल so likewise you can find out the values so for in today's session we have studied electrolytic cells then aspects of the product of electrolysis and some of the numericals which is which are given at the back of your chapter